Hi, this is Regina of Morale Fiber, and thanks for joining me for this Tunisian crochet tutorial. Today um, we have Tunisian Knit Stitch, which is actually a cro crochet stitch that imitates knitting extremely well. It's a beautiful stitch. I use it in one of my most popular patterns, and so I'd love to show you how to do it. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I have my foundation chain and foundation row already worked and my first loop on the hook. Now the first loop on the hook counts as your first stitch and we'll be working into this foundation row which basically just looks like Tunisian simple stitch. But we're doing Tunisian knit stitch. So we're gonna have a look at the anatomy here. The type of Tunisian stitch that you work has a lot to do with where you're sticking your hook. So with Tunisian Simple Stitch, which I did a video for, we are inserting our hook in the second stitch, not the first. Remember, we've already got that one on the hook. We're inserting it through the front and coming out the front. But with Knit Stitch, Tunisian Knit Stitch, we're inserting it through the front and coming out the back. And there's a number of places we can do that. As you can see, there's a space, you can kind of see my finger through it, between the first stitch and the second stitch. There's a little pair of loops, that's our loops from the foundation row, and then there's a space on the other side. To make Tunisian knit stitch, we'll insert our hook in between the two loops of the stitch below, but instead of coming out the front, we're going to come out the back through the space on the opposite side of that stitch. So there's a space in front. We skip that, insert our hook in between those loops, and come out the space on the opposite side of the work. And that's where we draw up our loop. Draw that through that channel to get our first Tunisian knit stitch. So we've already got our first loop because that's left over from the row before. Not through the first space, not around. This is wrong what I'm doing. We're not going to go into that space. You're going to go through those two loops. So it'll look like you'll pick up one loop and then you will exit your hook on the space on the other side of that stitch where you have the hook inserted. Yarn over and draw through that loop. And you've got a Tunisian knit stitch. And now that I've got that loop pulled up, the stitch is tensioned so that you can see the loop below a lot better. In Tunisian Simple Stitch, that stitch just looks like a bar because it's not tensioned the way that a Tunisian Knit Stitch is. Because a Tunisian Knit Stitch goes in between and comes out the opposite side. And I use my finger here to kind of guide my hook so I'm going in between those loops and exiting out the other side can be tricky because it's easy to catch the next stitch on accident or to miss your loops or to miss a space. So I use my back finger to kind of act as a stopper and feel where my hook is going. I'll stop and see these stitches are really starting to look like knit fabric, specifically stockinette stitch, which is a, a traditional knitting stitch. It looks, it pretty much mimics stockinette stitch exactly. And it's really a beautiful texture, um, but this stitch has given people some problems, so I'm happy to be doing a video about it today. It's a little bit tricky figuring out 
which loops to go through, which space to exit out of, so hopefully this helps. And here I've reached the end, which is also a little tricky. Now, we'll be going through those two loops just like normal and coming out the other side just like normal. But there's this little nub at the back. And I find in my Tunisian knit stitch, if I catch both the front of that loop and that little nub at the back and draw up a loop from that, that my end stitches will look a lot neater than if I only caught the one loop. And that completes a full forward pass. And we still need a backward pass. So we're going to yarn over and draw through one loop on the hook and then yarn over and draw through two loops for every other stitch. Yarn over, draw through two loops all the way across until you've reached the end of your row. And I'm gonna pull that back out and show it again. So I went through it kind of quick. So I'm going to finish my row in Tunisian knit stitch here, catch both those loops on the end, draw up a loop, and that's my forward pass. So every Tunisian row has a forward pass and a backward pass. I'm going to yarn over and draw through one to start my backward pass, and then every other stitch, yarn over and draw through two all the way back across the row until you only have one loop left on your hook and that is the next, the first stitch of the next row. So here's my one leftover loop. I don't work into that very first stitch. Don't work into that one because I already have a loop. I'm gonna work into that next stitch using the same strategy, which is going in through those two loops in the front and coming out the space on the other side of the stitch on the back. And that's Tunisian knit stitch. Here, I'm gonna speed it up a little for fun. And Tunisian knit stitch is the kind of stitch that's featured in my most popular crochet pattern right now, which is the elf coat. I will uh, link that pattern down below. It is a free pattern, but it's also available as a purchasable PDF. Here I'm showing the stitches in the fabric. It's beautiful. It's so stretchy and the fabric has a gorgeous texture. It looks just like knit. I love knitting, but there are certain things about it I just like Tunisian crochet better. Namely, you can't drop your stitches. Yikes. So anyway, um, take a look at the link to the free pattern. I'll link uh, to some things on my blogs below. And if you like my content, don't forget to like and subscribe. Maybe buy a couple of those pattern PDFs as it does help support my art. Thanks for coming by.